Thank you very much, Adam. Uh, first of all, I'd like to say welcome to everyone, and uh, thank you for coming, and welcome to the Tyendinaga Mohawk Territory. It's my uh, pleasure this afternoon to introduce to you uh, the Honorable Deb Matthews, um, who has gracefully joined us today. Uh, Deb is the Deputy Premier. She's the Chair of the Cabinet Committee. She's the Minister of Advanced Education and Skills Development and also the Minister Responsible for Digital Government. I've got to ask you what that's all about later. <laughs> and last but not least, she's the MPP for London North Centre. So ladies and gentlemen, please join me in welcoming the Honourable Deb Matthews. Well, thank you, Ralph. Uh, it is such... A terrific honor to be here with you today. Thank you so much, Chief, for, uh, for welcoming me here today so, uh, so gracefully. Thank you. Um, I do wish to recognize the long, long history of First Nations, Métis, and Inuit people in Ontario, and I want to show respect today for the Mohawks of the Bay of Quinte Nations of the Tyendinaga Mohawk Territory. Say go. Um, I'm first going to ask, are there students here in this crowd? If you are a student, give me a wave. Yeah, see the way at the back, the students. OK, I want the students to come way to the front, because this is all about you. Come on up. I want you to join me up here, if you don't mind. Come on over because this is what it's all about. Congratulations to all of you. Wonderful to be here with you. It's uh, terrific. I, I do, um, I want to say thank you to Suzanne for hosting us today as well. And um, this is exactly the right place where we should be celebrating the meaning and the value of Indigenous education. And this is the right place for us to be showing our support for Aboriginal institutes in Ontario. So I understand that FNTI uh, has drawn students from right across the province. In fact, 85% of the Indigenous communities in the province have sent a student or more to FNTI. So you truly do attract from across the province. Um, you've trained pilots. Any pilots here? Most of us. Most of us are pilots, okay. Um, pilots, social workers, public administration graduates working uh, both in First Nations communities and in our towns and cities across Ontario and so many other programs. Congratulations. Um, I am thrilled to be joined today by many people who have made today possible and I do want to give a bit of a shout out to some of the people from the ministry who are here today. Laurie Robinson, if you would stand up and give a wave. Thank you, Laurie. Glenn Craney, where's Glenn Craney? They're way at the back, Glenn, our ADM. Thank you, Glenn. John Meadow, where are you, John? There you are. I know our deputy minister, Sheldon Levy, would have loved to have been here. and. Uh, because he is very, very committed to best possible outcomes for all students, particularly Indigenous students. And I want to say a big thank you to my own staff, my Minister's Office staff, but a special shout out to Lisa Ray, who has driven this project since before I became Minister. Uh, thank you, Lisa. Um, And uh, I know that Minister of Indigenous Relations and Reconciliation, David Zimmer, is here in spirit. He very much wanted to be here, but he couldn't. And his deputy, Deb Richardson. Um, and of course, the Premier, Kathleen Wynne, whose commitment to Aboriginal education knows no bounds. The work you do here, the work that's being done at Aboriginal institutes across Ontario has a tremendous impact. In fact, I was thinking today, where would we be without AIs? Uh, where would you be without AIs? That's a good question to think about. Um, the good news is we do have AIs, and we have AIs getting stronger and better. Um, Aboriginal Institutes offer learning environment, environments for students that are safe, 
that are culturally appropriate, close to home, that are run and governed by Indigenous communities. And far more than skills or knowledge are taught here, Aboriginal institutes help students achieve their goals, reach their potential, fulfill their dreams. And that's why I am thrilled to be here to announce a significant new investment in Aboriginal institutes. I am <laughs> just wait and I'll tell you how much. Um, where is Rosie Mosquito? There she is, Rosie Mosquito, who is president of the consortium, who's been working so hard with us on this, was in the gallery of the day of the budget uh, a, f a few weeks ago. And I tell you, you know that Rosie has such a beautiful smile. On that day, her smile was even bigger, ear to ear, because in the budget we announced an additional $56 million over the next three years to Aboriginal institutes. So we are quadrupling our investment in Aboriginal institutes, and we're doing it because we believe in Aboriginal students. We believe in you. We believe in you. And we want more students to be able to access the the very special, unique education that's available in our Aboriginal institutes. Um, this is an important part of our response to the Truth and Reconciliation Commission. Uh, we are really making sure, we really want to do everything we can do to make sure that uh, Indigenous students have opportunities to be their very, very best. So what this means is that AIs will be able to expand their capacity, grow in their role as distinct and important, a distinct and important pillar in Ontario's post-secondary education system. I know that here at FNTI, in the program in which you are, students, any of you graduated? About to graduate? We lost the two graduates, they're gone. The, real, the graduates have gone, the students remain. They've gone to great jobs, right? Yeah. Yes, <laughs> they've gone to great jobs. And I know that um, we'll be able to expand capacity in this program right here at FNTI. Across the province, it will provide increased access, opportunity, and certainty for Indigenous learners in Ontario. It uh, marks our commitment to Ontario's Indigenous education strategy and this strategy is a commitment to forge stronger relationships with Indigenous communities and support programs and services that respond to the diverse needs and perspectives and opportunities for Indigenous learners. We are committed to a co-creation process as we move forward. And what that means is that we are going to work together as equal partners and we're going to establish Aboriginals, um, Aboriginal institutes as fully recognized partners. So with our colleges, with our universities, with our Aboriginal institutions, with government, all of us are committed to working together to uh, make sure that we get this right. So we all recognize the need to preserve and ensure their survival and if more than survival, we want Indigenous languages and cultures to thrive. And as AIs have shown us, language and culture are essential to support identity and community well-being. Someone earlier said to me, um, you know the best way to reduce crime? Education. So every dollar we spend on education serves a multitude, gives us a multitude of benefits. Uh, better health, better well-being, it's, it's, it's the foundation of everything. So we share a common goal. We want to create meaningful, lifelong opportunities, learning opportunities that help all Indigenous students acquire the skills, training, and education they need to fulfill their dreams and reach their goals so they can achieve their full potential as members of communities and succeed in today's economy. And that's why we're so committed to increasing Indigenous people's access to culturally appropriate post-secondary education and training. 
I do want to take a moment while I've got the microphone to talk about some other ways in which we're improving opportunities for Indigenous students. And they relate to, to OSAP. You may have heard that we are completely changing how we deliver student assistance in this province. We have about 5,500 Indigenous students who are accessing OSAP now. Under the new OSAP, a significant a portion of those students will receive larger grants and be eligible for free tuition. Yeah. Who is right? Um, in addition, we're changing the rules around uh, PSSP, the post-secondary uh, student support program that students uh, receive through their bands. It will no longer be taken into account as we're assessing OSAP eligibility. And what that means is that students will, who, who receive PSSP will get that on top of their OSAP amount. And last but not least, OSAP is now waiving the $3,000 student contribution for Indigenous students, which means $3,000 more in student aid. We're able to do this because of the strong partnerships and collaboration we have developed with our Indigenous partners. We know that we have a long road ahead of us. We also know that partnership and collaboration will be the foundation for even greater things for Indigenous learners and their communities. So I do want to say thank you to all who have been part of this. Thank you for your wisdom, your dedication, and the hard work that you're contributing to this important journey. Thank you for hosting me today as we together acknowledge a major milestone in our work together. Nyawe Ona.